Hi, this presentation is called Transforming Lives, the Game Terakoya Project at the University of Shizuoka. If you are one of my students in one of my classes, you're watching this video because it's a homework assignment. And I'm going to ask you to fill out a document. Um, this document can be found in the comments on the YouTube video. Uh, you can download, print that off, or, or use that on your computer. If you are not my student and you're just finding this because you're interested in uh, ludic language pedagogy, or you're a teacher, researcher, designer, and you stumbled upon this on the YouTube channel, uh, great, thanks for, take, for checking it out. Uh, I'm going to be explaining and exploring my Game Terakoya project at the University of Shizuoka, uh, which uses games for language and literacy teaching and learning. So whether you're a teacher, researcher, designer, or, you're, or one of my students, you're going to learn about the Game Terakoya project, and you're also going to be thinking about how you learn with games and perhaps how to teach and research with games as well. So uh, my name is Dr. Jonathan Dehan. I'm an associate professor in the global communication course in the Faculty of International Relations at the University of Shizuoka. I am American, but grew up in Canada, and I've been living in Japan for about 15 years. I have a master's degree in teaching English and a PhD in educational technology. Uh, I'm very interested in games and, and language teaching and learning. Uh, here at the university, I teach academic literacy skills, uh, project-based learning classes regarding English, uh, an English presentation class, and also a graduation seminar and thesis work. Um, if you have any questions, of course, you can get in touch with me through email, find me on Twitter, or uh, find some more information online. So that's just a little bit, right, about who I am. So who are you? That's where this worksheet comes in, right? This is what we're going to be talking about in this lecture. Uh, so please refer to this worksheet. So if you're my student, of course, right? Uh, please think and write about you, right? So there's this first box, right? Who are you? So I want you to take some notes. Uh, what about your personal life? What are your hobbies, your friends, your family? How about your public life, like in your neighborhood or in society or related to the government? Your professional life, right? You're a student, so that's part of your professional life. You're at school might have a part-time job as well, your work. Uh, what do you learn? What do you do? What do you make? What do you know? What, are, what experiences are you having? What are your skills? What are your connections and communities? Like face-to-face, -face, right? Or online or your local and global connections and communities. And your personality. How do you feel? Are you happy? Are you curious? Do you feel free, active? Are you participating in some way? I want you to take some time, right? I'm just saying right now, three to five minutes. Um, Add some thoughts here, right? Uh, for my students, right? English is fine or Japanese is fine. Any other language is fine. You can go ahead and just pause the video for three to five minutes and fill this out, okay? So just pause it and work on this. Right, after you finished with that, uh, I want you to think about this part of the worksheet right now. Who do you want to become? So who do you wanna be in one year, six months, five years, 10 years, 20 years? Who do you want to be, right? Who do you envision yourself becoming in the future? So same questions, right? What are your hobbies going to be in five years? Or who, you know, what about your family? Do you want to be married? Um, do you want to have kids? Do you want to be living with your family, right? How about your public life? Do you want to be participating in your neighborhood or society or in government? How about your professional life? Are you still going to be a student? Where are you going to be working? And at this time, what, what are you learning, right? What sort of knowledge are you gaining? What kind of experiences are you having? What kind of skills are you developing? How about your communications and connections? Will your face-to-face -face connections be changing? Will you be participating online in different ways? And how about your personality? Are you gonna be happy in five years or 10 years? Are you gonna be free, active and participating? And also, why do you want this future, right? So again, take three to five minutes, just add some thoughts. Again, English or Japanese or any language is fine. Just pause the video, take some time and fill out these different areas. Think about who you are right now and also think about who you want to become, okay? So why did I ask you to do this? To think about who you are now and who you want to become? Well, there's this change, right? So your hobbies now might be the same, they might be different in the future. Your work might be the same and might be different in the future. All these things will most likely change and develop in the future. Um, I think this is education, right? This is 
learning, this idea of what you can do, what you know, um, what your connections are, how you feel. This process of moving from who you are now to who you want to become is education and it's learning. And how it's, it's also how I teach here at the University of Shizuoka in my game to Akoya. So just talking about transformation, you've probably seen this word before, right? Uh, transformation. Trans, so relates to across or beyond or through. Form means shape or manner or character. And Asian is this idea of action or process or doing. So we might say that transformation is the process of changing completely. And this is really connected to the game to Akoya. So at the beginning of the, the class, it's about who we are. And at the end of the class, this is who we want to be, right? So I'm talking, about, I'm, not, I'm talking about transformation because I want to see a big difference in you, my students, right? I want to see a big difference in my students. And I also realize that I need to do things in order to see a big difference. Um, you and I, we need to do many things together, right? Students and I, teachers have to do many things together. And we also really need to slow down and teach and act in a lot of specific ways. All of these different steps are things that we need to do. So uh, during my lecture today, during, during this video, I want you to think about this idea of transformation. Who are you? Who do you want to become? And what do you need to do to become who you want to become? Who do you need to work with? What do you need to do? When do you need to do it? Where? How? Other? And can you think of some of these steps? Yeah. So this is all related to the game Tirakoya, right? If you're taking my class, this, you're, you're, you're in my class right now, and, and this is what we do in, in, the, in the class, right? Moving from who you are now to who you want to become. And I'm going to help you do that by doing these different steps. So I'm going to talk about the game Tirakoya, right? The different steps that we're, we're going to do this semester or this year or this in the seminar. And then hopefully you can find some ideas or at least get an understanding of what we're going to do and how this will help you. So the game Tirakoya, right? The uh, classes and seminars and workshops that I teach, it's based on the pedagogy of multiliteracies, um, which is a, a way of teaching and, and helping students learn. It's been around for, for more than 20, 25 years. And it, it's really composed of four steps. This idea of experiencing things, conceptualizing and analysis, and application and participation. And we can think about experience in, in this situation as game activities. We're going to play games, right? We're going to experience games. We're going to play games. But that's not the only thing we're going to do. We're also going to do these school activities. We're going to be discussing and doing research, right? Conceptualizing ideas, explaining things, and doing analysis projects. So playing games, talking about games, understanding games, and then applying and participating. You're going to use your knowledge and skills in some aspect in work or perhaps volunteering making something, sharing something, and communicating, okay? Uh, let me give you a couple examples to help you understand. So again, that first step, right, experiencing. So games. Um, a few years ago, one of my students got really interested in Uno and also this game Railways of the World, this uh, sort of modern board game. And she became really interested in the idea, that, like what's the difference between the real world and, the mad and, and a game world, right? So there are differences in different feelings. She got really interested in this, and we discussed that a lot. Um, she also got very interested in the history of, of the railroad in Mexico, America, and also Japan. And she also became very interested in her own language, right? So how she uses different verbs to explain what she does in a game. So again, playing games, discussing games, and doing research, and then participation. So she took her experiences, she took her knowledge, she took the things that she had, she had found out, and she worked to create a review that she posted on a popular board game website, Board Game Geek. And she posted her review using her knowledge and using her experiences and using like you know, new vocabulary, um, the magic circle. She applied what she did to participation on this public website. Yeah. Another student that I that I taught a couple of years ago was very got very interested in these projects. Uh, this is the Fun Theory Project. So. It's about making things fun in order to encourage people to behave, to change their behavior. Like this is the bottle bank arcade, right? So can you make recycling more fun by making it a game? Or can you turn stairs into a piano to encourage people to use the stairs instead of using the escalator? Cool stuff, right? Um, she got really interested in the fun theory and she decided, and after discussions and, and some research projects, she applied it 
by making her own game to try to change families' behaviors, right? So she made her own game. She made a website where she could share the game. And then she was interviewed by the local newspaper. And, and that helped her to share her website and also the game with lots of different families, right? Again, participation about doing things in society. And participation really is the goal of the game Terakoya, whether you're communicating in your first or second language, maybe making a, a review or a video or a tweet, or making a game, right? Making your own board game, remixing a game, or running some sort of event. So my students run events at the local Jidokan, like the Children's Center. And we also have run charity events to raise money um, to buy games and toys for sick children at our local hospital, right? So they played games, discussed games, and then ran these events to benefit local society. Again, participation is the final goal. If you've got any questions or comments, um, go ahead and leave them on the video or, or get in touch with me, okay? So I want you to think about this today, right? Who you are now, who you're going to become, and what does this transformation look like? What are the sorts of things that you need to do? And hopefully you can find some good ideas by listening to me talk about what I do in my classes and what you're going to do. I really want you to daydream, right? I want you to daydream about your future. What are the different things that you want to do with your life? Or what are the different steps you can take to get to something that you really want to do with your life? So I'm giving you permission. I'm encouraging you to daydream. So the game Terakoya, right? This is what I'm going to be talking about. There's a lot of steps. Again, so here's that experiencing, playing a game. Here's the, uh, the intellectual work, the academic work of conceptualizing and doing research projects. Here's the applying, right? Doing some sort of particip participatory project. Yep. But it's a little bit complicated, so I'm going to break it down into eight steps. And these are things that I and my students do to try to bring students from who they are to who they want to become. Okay. So there's this first step, right? The start. Um, at the beginning of the game Terakoya, I ask students to write about themselves. So like the questions I asked you, who are you? What are your hobbies? Who do you know? There's a, uh, usually I ask a lot of questions and students write about that on the worksheet that you're doing right now or in a longer document. They share that with me. And then we, I can see what they're writing about and I ask them questions. And I also, we also meet to discuss them. All right, what did they write about? Who, who, you know, who are they? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses, right? Um, what are their goals? How do they use media? Uh, what, are they, what, what are their literacies? What are their dreams, right? We do this um, so students work by themselves and then with other students and then with me, really to get to know yourself, right? You don't know, you can't figure out where you're gonna go until you know yourself, to prepare to get stronger, to prepare to be transformed, right? And in those discussions of who they are, we discuss the future, who do you wanna become? I suggest lots of different games that we might play, right? If somebody wants to be a teacher, I might suggest an educational game or a game that fits with education. Um, I'll suggest lots of different tasks, like those analysis tasks, and I'll select those to suggest some projects, right? Like running a local event or designing a game, working with a company or running a charity event, right? I'm trying to introduce things that will help students to help them become who they want to be, right? And it's about choice, right? Students have the freedom to choose what projects and what tasks are gonna work best for them. That's step two. In step three, we're gonna play, right? The games are really interesting. Games are uh, sort of the sort of their systems, right? They show aspects of, 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 of the real world. Like this is a, an economic game. It's a historical game. This game is about money, about interactions. We're gonna play some games, but they're all, it's all very purposefully done because it connects to transformation. It connects to these final goals. So here you can see my student playing a children's game, but that's because she was interested in popular board games for children in other countries, right? So she's taking notes, we're playing purposefully. After that, we're going to reflect and write. I'm gonna ask, uh, I ask students more questions again. How was the game? What did you notice about the language or, or how it represented society or, or um, how the game worked, the strategies? Students reflect and write about this. Um, which takes time, um, takes a lot of, they, students share their ideas, takes a lot of time and energy, right? And, and we share and discuss that in order to reflect and also to plan ahead. This gets students a lot of uh, experience about games and also it starts to help build their knowledge of games and language and society 
um, to help them participate later. It's, that, it's the start to that bridge. Students react, right? Students write a lot of things and then they share them with me again, right? So you, I'm reacting and asking and pointing things out. I'm reacting to students' ideas. So here you can see uh, students' notes and all these other you know, comments and questions are things that I'm asking them about because I'm really curious. And I also know that if the students explain it more, it will help them build, build their knowledge, build their skills and, and help them prepare for those um, deeper analytic projects and also participatory projects. Right? So I'm, I'm reacting to their ideas, I'm giving them feedback, and then we discuss those deeply again. Right? Why did you say that? Why did you use this language? Right? So we're, and then we're taking the time to discuss their ideas and try to connect it. Following that discussion, students always get really interested in a certain aspect of what they uncovered in their discussions. So they start to ask and answer an important question. For example, like after playing a game, um, one student was interested in, well, who plays this game? Um, are, do mostly men play this game? Women, are they rich, are they poor, right? And then she uh, went online and looked at people's uh, public you know, social media profiles to try to do some detective work about who plays these games or about, what, about the language that people use while playing games or using in rule books or about memory, like what, how, how do we use our brains to play certain types of games? Or is there a, a strategy for beating this game? So students get curious and conduct a project to satisfy their curiosity, right? They're these mini research projects. And students have said, like, it was easy to find my own interest to pursue and become enthusiastic about it. It was so much fun. I'd like to study further. So students always get really curious. And they're asking questions. They're gaining knowledge and experiences. They're looking at texts and communities and society, audience, language, technology, representation, right? They're doing these research projects and they give reports and presentations. They're satisfying their own curiosity, which is really, I think, what education is all about and what schools should be. And it's also connecting students to the world. So following, you know, when, when students are doing these projects, I'm also showing them, them and pushing, thing, pushing things on them and, and trying to push them to, to greater participation. So I'm trying to connect them and support them. Sometimes this works really well. So for example, uh, students were struggling with discourse analysis and I might say, like try circling all the verbs, right? Look, look at the verbs in the rule book. How are they different than the verbs in a recipe or in a love letter, right? So helping students do discourse analysis. Or some students told me, hey, we're writing a strategy guide about the game. And I said, cool, great idea. Who is this for, right? Is this for me? Is this for you? How about posting it on Twitter, on BoardGameGeek or on YouTube, right? So immediate, originally they thought that, that that idea was too big, but they actually ended up doing it, right? And I helped them to do that. Other students were wondering if a game was educational for children. Well, uh, try this, right? Describe each part and try to explain each part of it, like the board and the tokens and the money and, and, and um, the spaces on the board, and then try to judge each part. Is each part educational? What kind of education is it conveying, right? Um, it works a lot of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes um, I will say, you know, you've got to give some more details and examples, but students say, well, this information was enough or I didn't change it or a part of my group didn't work. Sometimes it's group dynamics um, that prevents students from going deeper. Sometimes my questions are too hard, right? And students don't know how to answer it, but my job is still to connect and support and try to help them understand the deeper parts of their experience through discussions, through materials that I make for, for students, right? And students said like, through the teacher's comments on this project, I realized a strong characteristic of myself that I never really paid attention to. It opened my eyes to new possibilities for my future. Following that, right, so they've done this academic work and they've, they've really learned a lot and contextualized, they've connected the game to society. Then they're going to plan a project. What are they thinking about? Making a game, running an event, uh, communicating with designers, making a website. They're going to plan a project, like who, what, when, where, how, why. I'm going to see their work and I'm going to comment it on, comment on it. Um, and then I'm going to help them to complete the project, right? They're, they're bridging to their future the students are planning and brainstorming and making a huge effort, but I'm going to help them through the planning, through the development, through the creation of the project. I'm going to help them do that. And the students do participate in society. They, they do run events. They donate games to, chair, to, to the hospital, or they make a game, or they tweet, or they post a review. Students absolutely like say, like, we participated in society. 
the assignments helped me to realize my participation project, right? On the way to who they are. But really, this project is not the end, right? This project is a huge step, but we do take time at the end of all of these steps to think about themselves, right? So students need to think about themselves again. What did they do? What were those different steps that they that, that, that they took to reach those different goals? How did they change? So they use their experiences to help see their own transformation. So this is a diagram of uh, one of my students who looked at the different steps that she went through, the different people who helped her, not, not just me, but the other students as well, and how her ideas changed. So it's very important for students to see that they really did change from who they were to who they are now. They learned something, they experienced something, they made something, they were able to do things, right? Um, and, and so again, like they're using all of their experiences and the data to trace things, to recognize these transformations and to plan continued transformation. This is really not the end of growth, of course. It's not the end of learning. They're going to continue to do things uh, well into the future, right? After they take my class or um, you know, after they graduate, right? Again, so those are the, some of the main steps in the game Tadakoya. And if you've got any questions or comments, you know, leave them on the video or, or get in touch, of course. So I explained a lot. There's a lot of things that we do in the game Tadakoya. Did you get some ideas, right, about how to reach who, what, what you want to do with your future, some different aspects? Did you write down some things on that piece of paper? Did you think about how you as a teacher or researcher might, might change or add things to help students transform? I know, right? There's so many things like these. These are my notes putting together this presentation, like these different steps that we do, these different things that we do, all the, all the reasons, all the, all the materials and things that I do. I know that's so much, right? But I think that this is really is what transformation requires or needs or look like, looks like. We do a lot more in this class than other classes. This is not a lecture class. Um, we combine a lot of different steps, but that's what it takes, I think, to get students from who you are to who you want to be. We take a lot of steps. We slow down, take a lot of time and effort. We communicate carefully. And really, you know, what's the purpose of today's lecture? You remember? Again, like it's about your transformation. It's about students' transformation, about who they are, and who they want to become. And so how about you, right? And, and it really is about you. Hopefully during this presentation, you've thought more about who you want to become and the variety of things that, that you might have to do to get to that goal. Who do you need to work with? What do you want to understand? When do you want to do things? Where and how? And uh, what, are, what are those different steps? Like um, experiences in society, um, discussions or, or getting knowledge or skills and also participating and applying that in your personal, public or professional lives. I want to help you with that. Right? Do you know who you are? Right? If you know who you are, I think you should keep thinking. Right? Um, it's important to know your strengths and weaknesses and values. Right? And do you know who you want to be? Right? It's really important to understand where you're going. If you do know where you're going, that's great. But please understand that it might change though, right? Um, you might want to be a teacher now, but you might change your mind. You might have some experiences that, that, that shift that goal. Um, if you don't know, this says no, right? If you don't know who you want to become, that's totally okay, right? And, and that's fine, we always are growing, but then people need to think more. Think about yourself and what, who, you, who you are and, and what your skills are. Read more experience more, create more, try making things, and try to connect with people more too. Try to draw inspiration from other people. And do you know how to become the person that you want to be, right? Do you know how to move from who you are to who you want to be? I'm going to help you, right? To make a plan and then create good habits, share your progress, work with good people, try to keep in, keep trying to improve yourself, learn from failure, and also celebrate your successes. Um, in the game Tadakoya, we're going to do all of these things, uh, and I'm going to help you. So, and again, right, this is about the game Tadakoya, and I hope that you understand some of the things that we do in the class and, and in my teaching and research, which is really about transformation, right, about changing students. Help. It's really about helping students 
um, develop themselves, like understanding who they are and who they want to become. Um, it, the game Turquoise is all about transformation. And I've seen students transform. Students have transformed. They've reached their goals. They use their language to communicate online. They've made games that they thought were meaningful for society. They've gained confidence and other skills. Students' English has improved in terms of vocabulary or TOEIC. And students have also been able to use their experiences in the game Tiroquai to get their dream jobs, whether they're working in uh, industry, whether they're teachers. They've said that the game Tiroquai has really helped them to get their dream jobs. Not only students, but society has transformed too, which I think is really important. Um, students have gained, you know, that we've created new clubs. Students have made new friends. Students have uh, gotten new experiences. The game Terakoi is not just about transforming students, but it's also about transforming society, right? The pedagogy of multiliteracy stuff. Um, students have created new games, new ideas, and new media. Right? And students have discovered new ways of helping. Students have put ideas into the world, and students have right, found new ways of helping people and, and using their skills to help other people. I've also transformed, which, is, which has been wonderful. Um, I think that I help students more than I did before. Right? This is about talking with students more and understanding that my job is to help students transform from who they are to who they want to be. I've also changed focus. I, I used to, I've been teaching English for about 25 years at this point, and I used to focus on, on spoken English or vocabulary or grammar. But now I think about these things. Yes, English is important, language is important, but I think happiness is a lot more important. I think language can be used to help people be happy and to be curious, right? And to be free and to be healthy. So I, I want everybody to think more about these things than just about language. These are connected. And this is probably, this is, in my opinion, these are more important than just language. And I also think less about games. I used to think a lot about games. I think, used to do a lot of research on video games. And I used to think a lot about the technologies and, 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 and the cool tools that are out there. But I think more about people now. I think about the people who play games because it really is about transformation. And I'm not trying to transform games. I'm trying to transform people. So I need to think about people more. So my teaching is also transformed. I really could go on and on and on. Um, and I'm happy to you know, get in touch, uh, ask me questions. Uh, I'd be happy to, to chat with anybody uh, about something that you don't understand or, or would like to push back on. Um, but of course, we've got to pause a little bit, right? We're almost at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to pause my discussion of transformation here, right? Of course, if you've got any questions, you can uh, get touch, email, or, or Twitter, or find some more information. So some closing remarks. Yeah, I'm going to just kind of uh, recap a little bit, sum up, and, and close things. So just, you know, just some really simple guidelines, right? I really do think, I know that you can become the person you want to be. You can make the world the place you want it to be. You can transform and you can help the world transform as well. But to do that, you first need to understand yourself. Look in the mirror. What are your skills? What are you good at? What are you not so good at? And how can you use these things? You really need to think about what you can do. And then when you think about what you can do, probably there's a lot of things you can do but you do need to choose a direction and a goal. And I can help you with all of these. Um, after you, then you need to make a plan, right? Once you set a direction of becoming a teacher or, or, or uh, helping society, make a plan, which I can help you with as well. And then you need to take lots and lots and lots of small steps. Goals are usually a, a long way away and you need to work on those steps in your plan every day, which I'm gonna help you with. Find good people to work with very hard to do anything alone in this world. So hopefully there are some really good people in this class. Uh, I hope that I'm one of those good people that you can work with. I'm going to help you. I really do promise that you're going to see how these small steps will add up, not only in this class, but also in your life. And I really do promise to help you become the person that you want to be. That's what this class is about. That's what the game Terakoi is about. That's what learning is about. Um, if anybody would like to share their ideas, right, about the things that they wrote, of course, you can reach out. My students, right, you do need to share this with me, right, so I can, I know more about you. And of course, if you've got any questions or comments, 
um, reach out to me, right? Through class, through email, Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to discuss these ideas with anybody. So thank you very, very much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Um, it's been a real ple pleasure uh, discussing the game Terakoya with you and all these different aspects that go into transformation. So um, hope you have a good class. I uh, hope the presentation has been interesting to you. Again, reach out if you've got any questions. Thank you very much.